Well, it's another exciting day here on the homestead. Today we get to pull carrots and we are prepping for the last bit of our summer planting. Let's get going. So the last thing that we needed to do to get rid of our spring vegetables and bring in our summer vegetables was pull out our carrots. So we went ahead and got that done today. We got quite a bit of them. So we'll go ahead and take a second and show you what it looked like before, and then we'll show you how many we got out of it. Before we pull them, I just wanted to show real quick and give a bit of an overview of this bed and the process for this year. Originally, we weren't even going to plant this because I didn't think I had the compost in early enough. We were really surprised that as many seeds germinated as they did. Usually seeds won't germinate in compost that is as hot as this was. Again, we do have some really dead spots in here. Uh, the idea is we're gonna go through, pull them, we'll cut the tops off, we'll have all the carrots in a bucket, and then we'll show you how many of those we got. Real fast while we're doing this this morning, I also wanted to show part of our <laughs> interplanting crops. It's going to be time to go ahead and start moving this lettuce out. As you can see, our ground cherries are starting to get big enough to where they're encroaching and they're going to start demanding that space. So before the lettuce gets hot, um, or before it gets hot, I'm sorry, and the lettuce starts to bolt or gets bitter, it's a good time just to go ahead and pull it out there and kind of keep everything copacetic in the bed. So we did have a few carrots that had been in the ground a little too long. I wanted to show what that looks like when they start going. You can see how they split open right there into the middle. We had, I don't know, maybe half dozen or so. I anticipated we would have waited, you know, another week or so. Um, a lot more of our carrots would have turned that way. So it looks like we got them out of the ground just in time. So now that we've removed the carrots, we're going to get those all put up and put away. As you can see, we had a bunch of them. I thought it would be fun for the back end of this video just to take a stroll real fast through the top garden so everybody kind of has an idea of where we're at at this point in the year. Beansy, you enjoying the weather out here today? It has gotten pretty warm. We're up to water in about every other day. Um, you know, it's been in the low 90s for about 10 days straight and we have not had any rain so the gardens are doing really well though. Uh, we just saw we took all these out. You can see the size of the marigolds and stuff. Um, it'll be fun to see what happens with the beans as they come up in there. I guess we can start down here with this tomato. Now that we pulled all of the carrots out, I'm gonna go ahead and stake him up. We might as well leave him in, right? I mean, I don't see any reason in letting a tomato plant just go to waste. So let's take a look at how our zucchini in a bucket is doing. It's, uh, as you can see, it is growing up the steak really well. Uh, we've had several good sized zucchinis. We'll let that go for another day. We'll pick it tomorrow morning and have it with dinner. Over here, our pimento peppers are looking good. Look at the color on this chard. This stuff is absolutely delicious. This with this dinosaur kale. The dinosaur kale I am super impressed with after we went through and sprayed it. It has bounced back with a vengeance. I have had to spray it about every two to three days just to make sure that those kale worms do not come back. I did add two cayenne peppers here closer to the edge. We just had them after I gave away the rest of the plants. We had a couple of them left, so I'll put them in there. Um, the ones in the back back there, they got burned up pretty good. So, you know, they may or may not make it, but since it wasn't part of the plan, I'm not too concerned about it, to be perfectly honest. And then up here, we have some more zucchini. These guys are killing it. Uh, we have had a lot of zucchini so far this year. There's another big guy down there coming off. So next couple days, we'll have four or five more zucchini plants, or zucchinis, not zucchini plants. Um, and then the bell peppers, they're just now starting to flower. I'll probably go ahead and pick the flowers off until the middle of this month and then I'll let them go on from there. 
our cherry tomatoes and basil are looking fantastic if you want your basil to last all year you know again just make sure you pick the blooms off of it um, let's see I've been picking them off oh here's a good example right there perfect uh, came through yesterday but you can see how it's starting to get the little cluster for it to bloom if you just go down to the node underneath of it and pick it off like so uh, the basil plant will continue to grow from there. If not, it'll go to seed and it'll get really woody and your leaves will lose a lot of the smell and taste and eventually the plant will die off. It believes after it put out the seeds that it has done its job. The marigolds and basil are working really well. You can see how healthy these cherry tomato plants are. Um, there are blooms all over these. Uh, let's see, I believe we have over here yeah, you can see down there the orange cherry tomatoes they have started to set already so it will not be long and we will be enjoying cherry tomatoes look at that corn i don't want to get too excited about corn we've mentioned this a few times but um, over the years we have had some fantastic looking corn plants our ground cherries have taken over we showed that earlier that we were taking the you can see where we took the lettuce out. We pulled them up roots and everything. And then I'll go through this afternoon, uh, put out some granule fertilizer when I do the carrot bed and water it in real well. Um, at this point, we want our ground cherries to start growing that way so they can get big and fat. Last year they were fantastic, but they just didn't get the size that I wanted. You know, I overplanted is what happens. I have a tendency to do that a lot. And over here is the yellow squash and you know we've been eating on yellow squash for a week now week and a half and if the previous years are any indication we will continue to do so for many moons um, we've gotten in here and we have started slowly but surely pulling these beets out but some of them you can see in here the size of some of these beets are massive and we like our beets raw with our salads so one large beet will last us about five or six days for our salads and then of course we have the additional um, yellow squash on this side as well and you know with the four yellow squash that is just about perfect for us to be able to eat quite a bit and then have a few to give away to the neighbors but we grew too many last year i think i grew like eight yellow squash last year and we were just inundated with it you can only eat so much yellow squash and we tried to freeze it and we didn't like it so we just grew enough to eat during this time of the year um, and we'll go forward with that. But um, you can tell here our banana peppers are coming along nicely. It's getting time to start uh, tying them up. I'll get that done this evening before I water everything. And in here is another one of our zucchini plants. Um, this doesn't seem to be doing as good. I think this one over here doesn't quite get as much sunshine. We've only had one zucchini off of here and it doesn't seem to have as many flowers either, but overall we're happy with it. Um, I don't think I will grow a zucchini in this bed next year. I think the bucket and the two zucchinis in the beds over there will be uh, where I go. This time of year is a great time to start making garden notes for the following year. I know it might be a little early for some people, but I like the idea of get, taking notes early, middle, and end of the year. So one of my early notes for the summer is going to be no zucchini in this bed. We have some blooms. I have decided, I did pick the blooms off of off of these, I don't know, for a couple weeks. Um, I started this week just kind of letting them go. I want to see if there's any difference between these and like the bell peppers that I'm picking now and letting them go in the middle of the year. And then finally, we'll take a look in here. We have just a little bit of lettuce. It is not growing very quickly, but I think the 90 degree weather has something to do with that. I'm not sure how it's going to turn out, but the idea was we wanted to experiment with this to see if we could get like a late batch of salad greens. I'm not sure it's going to work, but we'll keep you folks updated. Just a couple notes to throw in here at the end of the video. Currently, we are still heating a salad once or twice a day. Uh, we have quite a bit of the butter crunch lettuce coming out. We still have radishes. Of course, we just picked the carrots that we'll continue to eat in there. We have beets and we're getting our first cucumbers. So the salads are fantastic. Hopefully we can have all of that with some tomatoes relatively soon. 
The second thing I wanted to throw in here is our first round of green beans are going spectacularly. I know Leslie had talked about it uh, in last week's vlog and I'm sure she'll bring it up again. But right now, every three days, we're picking a little over a gallon of green beans. So, you know, a gallon of green beans, that's like three meals for Leslie and I. So we're really hoping that this upcoming planting of green beans gives us as much as that. That way we can go ahead and try our hand at canning. With all that being said, as always, I appreciate you all for hanging out with me. Till next time, I hope everyone takes care of themselves. Peace.